welcome to this gaming podcast by hosted by I am Can't Tell Nothing 101 and this is Can't Tell You 7694. We are gamers. I game Nintendo, he games Sony. We both game a little bit of Microsoft on the Xbox, but that's not our primary goals. Yes, we did have an Xbox person scheduled to come today, but I guess he has decided not to show up. So, unless he calls, we will not be having him today. Representing the Xbox One, isn't that just like the Xbox One? How it's letting everybody down nowadays? When, when, when has the Xbox been getting people's hopes up? <laughs> That's, That's a, a good question. question. That's the best question I've heard so far today. All right, everybody. Well, since we are going to be doing this little podcast, this little video about the next-gen consoles, Wii U, Sony's PlayStation 4, and the Microsoft Xbox One, which is not going to be doing that good in sales. Cable Box One, hashtag that, hashtag that. Yes, pretty much, Cable Box One. All right, guys. So, today's topic is the next-gen. So, let's hear what comments or topics you want to refer over today in this video? Uh, I have several topics here. One is the ability to render games in native 1080p in 60 frames a second. Games that, you know, that are coming out this generation on the PlayStation 4 and Wii U and Xbox One that surprise you graphically. The, the developers, uh, do you guys think the developers are lazy, you know, will we rec will we see the return of old franchises, you know, such as Midnight Club, F-Zero, you know, franchises like that, and what the systems can do and what we think they should do, and also are sequels a good thing, you know, to just keep coming out with sequel after sequel, you know, so that, those are the topics. Okay, so let's start with the native 1080p and 60 frames a second. Now I've done some research about the Sony PlayStation 4 and what I have dug up is that it will be rendered at native 1080p 60 frames a second. You might get a, couple, a little bit of frame drops here and there for certain games, but it's not going to be that noticeable. You will be mostly getting 60 frames a second. With the Wii U, you know, it's already been confirmed about, you know, by the Batman Arkham City Armored Edition developer that the Wii U can do 1080p 60 frames a second. And also, if you need more proof, go look at the games shown at E3 by Nintendo, you know, the Mario Kart, uh, the Mario 3D World, you know, all those games, they were rendered at 1080p 60 frames a second native. So, you know, that's all the proof we need right there. In the case of the Xbox One, I don't know about the 1080p, but I think it will. The 60 frames, it will be running at 60 frames. That, that's for truth. But it will drop a lot. Yeah, more. It, it, it's gonna drop, you know, because we haven't really heard anything about the CPU, but I think it's gonna be somewhere near like the same design as Sony CPU, the, the Jaguar type. It's gonna be somewhere in that family of CPU design, so it's, they're, they're going to be fairly, they're going to be some pretty powerful systems, so I think we'll be seeing a lot of 1080p, 60 frames, it's kind of, sort of, here and there on some games. Alright, so what's the next topic that we're going to be having at hand right now? Games that surprise you graphically. Alright, games that are going to surprise me graphically for the PS4 would have to be the new Assassin's Creed AC4 Black Flags. That game looks amazing for what we've seen so far. That and the, uh, the new Infamous game where you're playing as his son. Where he, well, we'll what we've seen from the trailers, or what I've seen at least, um, you can, he's smoke, you can turn into smoke, command the shadows, basically stuff like that. Whereas his father was in with the electricity, where you'd have to go to power stations and amp up your energies to become more heroic. Games that are going to surprise me graphically this generation for the Wii U has to be Mario Kart 8 and Bayonetta 2 and also uh, the new Monolith Soft game trailer that they showed. I'm going to start with Mario Kart. At, you see at E3, 
that's Nintendo fans. I guarantee we didn't expect. We we thought the 3D Mario game was gonna shock us graphically because I know I did. I know people on YouTube that I've talked to. They also thought that. But when they showed Mario Kart and they just showed the environment, it's really colorful. And you know, it just looks amazing. Like you know, literally when I saw it, you know, my jaw dropped. You know, I didn't expect Mario Kart to look better than a 3D Mario game. You know, we've pretty much never really seen that before. You know, if we take a look at um, Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS and Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS as well, which game looks better? Super Mario 3D Land. So I guess we kind of expected that, and it was quite the opposite. In the next game, the Monolith Soft game, that game, the amount of detail in that game is amazing. Like, to be able to see stuff like the birds or whatnot far off in the distance, you know, and they're actually moving, you know, it's it's not just there, they're not moving, they're, they're not just there, not moving, they're actually in the distance moving. Yeah, it's not like that pixelated move where their wings are staying up, but they're just gliding. Yeah, it's... It's actual flapping. There, you can the actually thing. see the flapping. If if you have some pretty good eyes, you actually see the flapping, you know, and it's, it's, I, I, it's kind of like Monster Hunter, you know, with the giant monsters, you know, and the amount of detail in the monsters and the characters, you know, from what we've seen, the, 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 the battle sequences, they look pretty cool, and, you know, the giant mech suits, the, the lighting of the world, you know, reflecting off the mech suits is pretty cool, too, so that game looks amazing, and also Bayonetta 2, it looks like a, a, big, a, a bigger scale game than the previous Bayonetta, you know, they show the scene where you're actually, you're fighting on top of this aircraft, you know, and the world's moving, you know, that game was at 1080p, 60 frames, you know, you saw every detail from everywhere, you know, so I think, I think those games, you know, for the Wii U shocked me graphically, and do you have any games that shocked you graphically for the Xbox One? Well, the Xbox One, what more can we say? I mean, it's, it's like we, there's no point in actually looking at games for it. We're not gonna get it. I mean, all the people that I've seen on YouTube said that they're not gonna get it. They'd rather get the PS4 than the Xbox One. So games that are gonna shock us graphically, probably the only ones that I know, if they're gonna make a new Halo, it's probably gonna be Halo or Gears or one of their more exclusive games. Or Grand Theft Auto V might even do well. On it. That might shock me graphically if it's actually gonna do what they said it's gonna do, which is gonna be 1080p and 60 frames a second. The only game that's gonna really surprise me graphically on the Xbox One, and not even really graphically, just you know, just it's just gonna prove that it's more powerful than you know, current gen. You know, it's more powerful than a, than their 360 or PlayStation 3 is the uh, Son of Sparta game. I, I don't remember the name, but you're like it's just like 300. It looks just like 300. The only thing that game proves to me is. How many people can be rendered? Like how much? How many like people in, can be in that game rendered and moving all at one time, and still keeping 60 frames? That doesn't necessarily have to do with graphics. That's more of processing power. But like my com like my colleague says here, don't I think Halo is gonna surprise me graphically. And the next topic we have are the developers. Are they lazy? Or are they actually putting in the time? And I think they're lazy. Yes, most of them are lazy. How, like for certain systems, you get certain things. Like, let's go back to uh, last gen, where it was Sony's PlayStation 3, Nintendo's Wii, and the Xbox 360. All three games, let's take Black Ops, for example, on, that old, on the older console. It, um, on all the consoles, there was very different. Each thing was different. On Jungle, for Wii, you had a lot more foliage on that one path route from the uh, dem from the temple all the way back to the huts. There was a lot more foliage to hide in. Yes, there's invisible walls there where you can't go into most of them, but the point is there was more foliage. It's like the processing power for a Wii U or a Wii was better than a PlayStation 3 or an Xbox 360. No, that was simply not the case. It's not the case. It's just the Wii U or the Wii is more of a family system so it's not going to be processing it's not meant for processing more violent games so for them to do that is lazy on their part 
to not do it for all the other consoles that have more processing power. That's what my take is on that. You know, and, um, you know, just games. Uh, one of my uh, good favorite sports games, I like to play rest WWE games. I love WWE, you know, personally. So, you know, I'm going to buy the games. And one thing is that, you know, for... For, um, if you go back to SmackDown versus Raw 2009, it was pretty much the same. You know, the, the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, it just had stuff that the Wii, that the original Wii just could not render because of the lack of processing power. But you know, it had online, it had pretty much everything else that you know the um, other versions had, DLC, all that. You go to advance to WWE 12 or WWE 13. The gameplay is, you know, it's, it's good, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have, there's no online, I don't know why, you know, there was no online, and the stuff just looked like it, they didn't take the time to, you know, just develop it right, you know, they gave us a half game, you know, just a half, half-assed game, you know, it's not a good, it, it was a good game for me, but, you know, for a lot of people, it was a pretty much terrible game. And I think that the developers should have, they should take their time on each version of the game and develop it. You know, just take their own time developing it. You know, if you're gonna give each each uh, version of the game a different feature, make sure you give everyone that, that different feature. If, if, if you're gonna do that, you know, if you're gonna give the Xbox 360 version, they create a stadium, you know, create an arena, give it to the PlayStation 3 version, and give it to the Wii version. Because, I mean, if, if, if the old WWE games for, like, the GameCube and PlayStation 2 can do that stuff, the Wii can do that, because the Wii is more powerful than those two, you know, those previous sixth-generation consoles, so... Developers just gotta stop being lazy. It's a lot of, it's a lot more games out there, I just do not feel like naming them all. Next topic. Uh, will, will we will we see any returns of old franchises such as uh, let's see um, Midnight Club, F Nintendo's F Zero, you know Sony's Midnight Club, I should say, yes. Nintendo's F Zero, uh, Sony's Ratchet, I think, yeah, Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank. Clank, you know. Another personal favorite of mine was. Uh, it was tied to Tasmanian Tiger or something like that. I thought that was a pretty cool game. But will, will we see any returns of those games, do you think? Um, I don't know. But if they redid uh, Midnight Club, I suggest putting in, at the very beginning, uh, before you even start playing the game, you get a, you have to pick between automatic and stick. Now, if you choose automatic, you cannot choose and change it throughout the game. Same goes for if you choose stick. If you're going to choose it, you have to use it. So, later in the game, when you finish it, and then you can change it if you don't like it. Or if you want to try the other, just to, you know, try something new. But with stick, I want them to, um, at the end, be able to let you set your gears. Like, set gear times. Because a lot of people that I know that play it really want to set their gear times because all we do is drive stick. And all, it has to, all you really have to do is keep, like, the same um, leveling system like how you have in Midnight Club. LA Complete Edition where it's ranks. Once you get to the highest rank and after you partner or do whatever you're going to do in that game, um, have the highest rank be a gearhead where then you can unlock the chance to change your gear times. That's something that I want to see in a new game if they actually decide to remake it. Another Sony game that I want redone is probably going to be like Crash Bandicoot. That whole entire series that they did with the racing and the um, adventure. It's it's perfectly compact for what it is. It's probably one of the best games that Sony has done um, in recent years, and they need to uh, remaster it, redo it again. Nice. The only game I can see being remade by Nintendo is probably F Zero. You know, because that game was pretty popular. You know, I've never really played. I didn't play the F Zero that came out for GameCube. But I, I did love the old 8-bit, you know, the 8-bit ones, the 32-bit F-Zero games. I, lo I love those. So, I can, if, if that game was to be remade, I think it would make a lot of people happy. That or Earthbound, you know, that game especially, Earthbound, 
people love that game. You know, I never really was a fan, but you know, it would be pretty cool to see that game come back. You know, see everybody happy about that coming back. And so, let's what about Microsoft? Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft. I don't know that many besides Halo and Gears. Yeah, those are their exclusives. Uh, let's see. Well, they need to make a new Gears. I mean, the newest one that they have isn't wasn't really that good. A lot of people would make complaining. The new Halo was good though, so they can keep that the same, keep on the same uh, track that they're going with that. And uh, a couple other things, just bring back all the older games that people want. Like a lot of people want um, some of the first games you guys have ever made. If you, if you don't know how to reach out to your fans, you're an idiot. Just go to every social media site out there: Twitter, Facebook. All you start really start live streaming some Q and A's or something from Twitch. Yeah, all some, you really have something. to do is just uh, up social media. Just yeah, if you're on Twitter, tweet something out. What games do you guys want to see redone? Listen to them. If you guys actually have the time to do it, then do it. That's all it is. It's not really oh, let's not do it. Let's not ask. Let's just make new games, new games, new games. No, people want to play the old games. That's why they still have them. That's why if you look on eBay, people are selling their old games and people are buying them. This is what people are looking for. They're looking for the old classics, redone, not just in HD, but completely remastered like it's a completely new game, but you know it's still the same look, game. Look at new Super Mario Brothers on the DS, the Wii, 3DS, and Wii U. Those are those are classic 2D side-scrolling Mario games from you know, back on the NES and Super NES. People love those 2D classics, classic side scrollers. I, I love them, I know. You know, my, my, he, he plays them sometimes when he's over. So I'm like, people love those games, that's why they sell. You know, just just keep up making these good games. Hit social media up with some Q&As for, the, for, the, for your um, followers and stuff. You know, and, and the next topic is, are sequels a good thing? You know, this is kind of some what we were just talking about, you know. Yeah, we did games into it a redone, little bit here. Games there. redone, you know. Yeah. Our, sequels, yeah. for certain games, need to happen, but for others it really doesn't. Like Call of Duty, I mean obviously there's going to be sequels every year. AC, they're saying that they're going to do sequels every year. Um, Battlefield, I mean, Battlefield's way late in the game now. Because they're just trying to copy off of Call of Duty and make it just a little bit more physics wise where like oh if you throw a frag or a c4 at a building plant a claymore next to a building or whatever they have as their tactical your uh, your lethalities and it will actually like blow a hole in the building now you can't go into that building but the damage is there so you know okay this has more power than on call of duty but i mean the whole battlefield thing it's not really worth it to me you know where as call of duty is and other games are but for remakes or to uh, continue a series, <clears throat> it, it depends on the game. It really does. It, it really depends on the game. Certain games don't need to be continued on because of how they ended. But some things, you know, wait a couple years then just revisit, like, you know, like a 15 years later type thing. But don't not do it the year after because that's, I mean, that's a waste of time, you know? It's like, oh, let me just do this and be like, oh, 15 years later, blah, blah, blah happens. No, because that's not how it's going to work. Speaking of that, this is the question that had me thinking that I received on, on Twitter one day when I was talking about this. Someone asked me, how would you feel if a Zelda game came out every year, you know, for a home console, big scale Zelda game every year? And me, I said, I was lost on it for a second, but as I thought about it, I was like, I really wouldn't like it like that, you know, because I don't really get games, you know, I don't really go out and, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the money, well, I would have the money, but I probably wouldn't be willing to go out and get a Zelda every year, you know, I like it the way it is, it's like every other year, every three, four years or something like that, you know. In the, but like he, like he said, in certain cases, some games have to come out like sports games. Madden, FIFA, basketball, NBA, MLB, MLB, NHL, NHL, stuff NHL like that. some cases, um, WWE in some cases. That doesn't have to, but in some cases it does. But just sports games, you know, maybe Tiger Woods, if, if 
they're coming back with that. Any sports game, they need to come out every year, keep you updated. If not every year, then every other year. And if they're not going to release new ones, at least have updates every month with the new, like for NBA or NFL, stuff like that, where they get drafts and everything, every month have an update where you get the new, uh, the new people yeah. as, okay, on this team. So, like, if you have a team that they have traded somebody within the update, they'll be traded. Not, oh, they'll still be on the team even though you know that they've been traded. So it, save I mean, us it's the just, yeah. Save us the trouble of actually going through all that work. And then also saving you guys the trouble of making a whole entirely new game. Yeah, spending all that money. Exactly. And where you can just update. Yeah, just send up updates. That's I mean, it's a lot cheaper to send it out an update than just to make a whole new game, mass produce it, and do everything like that's, that. Save you. That'll save you guys millions of dollars. If you can just, you know, for 2K, let's say, for example, you know, 2K, 2K14 is about to come out. If you just add all of the little features and updates you're going to add to 2K, 2K14 to 2K13, that will save you a lot of money. You won't have to go out and, you know, just whole make make a whole new game, spending about two, three million dollars just making making a game. And plus, we're still in 2013, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, why release a game that's going to happen next year when you don't even know what's really going to happen next year? I mean, so some, like somebody, could just, somebody could just retire, and you're gonna end up having that doing your team. If you're gonna play your career mode, you're gonna you're gonna want it with all the players that's on there. You're not the gonna want it. Players. You're not gonna want it with some dude that's retired already, because you're gonna you're gonna figure out he's gonna be dominating you. He's gonna piss you off. Exactly, because you know he's gonna be good, but I mean, like with uh, when you're playing with your friends multiplayer, you know you can have retired people in. That's probably one of the best things for it. But you can't have somebody that's retired in on career because that's not what it is in real life. Like, we watch basketball all the time. We keep up to date with all the teams, all the drafts, and everything like that. So when we see somebody get traded or anything like that, we want to see that in the game as well. We don't just want to see it oh, in the next one that's coming out. And the last topic we have is our system capabilities. You know, This has something to do with the 1080p. Can it produce 1080p? Can it? You know what can it do as for to home entertainment or social media or um, just what the system can do overall mm -hmm. okay so with the research that I did on Sony the um, it's gonna be native 1080p with 60 frames a second and uh, the standard uh, hard drive that you're gonna get is 500 mega uh, gigabytes and then your um, gaming processor is five gigabytes, which is really good for this game console. Uh, for Xbox, I didn't really do any research on that one. Yeah. That's what the Xbox person was for, but was that dude never showed up. up. So I don't know. If you want to check out uh, anything about Xbox, you know, yeah, we'll we'll post links in the description for that. If you want to go ahead and check out and do some reading on that, just in, to see if you want to actually get it or not. And I have some support right here the uh the ram the amount of ram in both the playstation 4 and the xbox one is eight gigabytes but it's shared ram it's not eight gigabytes of total ram it's shared ram so any spec tech tech head or whatnot you guys would know this is i sure as heck don't the wii u has two gigabytes of total ram you know so the developers can do what they want with that the uh, the Wii U's, you know, it's the the CPU is clocked at 1.24 gigahertz. It's slow, but it's supposed to be slow because uh, the GP GPU inside of the Wii U can handle stuff that the CPU probably can't handle, you know. And also, you know, the the graphical capabilities of the Wii U give it time, you know can't look at launch games because when has a launch game ever just stood out I mean if you go to the you know if you go to the, the Xbox 360 on launch on launch um, launch day look at you know Tony Hawk look at the Tony Hawk game the game looked just the same on all the weaker consoles you know as it done the 360 if you look at the PS3 the games right away didn't really show you the power of the PlayStation 3 until like 2008 when we got out of the standard definition era. So, you know, and you know, since there's no 
standard definition error to get out of anymore. The games are going to be looking similar, just with you know different stuff. So give give these systems time. Don't judge the power of the system just on the launch games. Give it time. Give it about a, give let the system be out for a year, then judge the games. It's going to come out. Will they be looking same as current gen, or will they actually be that next gen leap that that you know you want? And then um, I think to add on that is with the, the CPU for the PS4 is a 1.2, uh, it's clocked at 1.2, but that's only because of the, uh, the GPU, it's a Jaguar Core 8, so I mean that's probably the most powerful thing that they could put into it. That's a, that's a high end, that's a high end CPU That's basically right something there. for your uh, computer that is in a console. Now that's basically saying that computers are going to be um, they're going to be updated a lot more than PS4s and everything like that now since they're putting the Jaguar Core 8 into a uh, a console that the more of uh, the more uh, GPU that they're putting into a computer now the technology is going to be a lot better for PC gaming as people like to play on PC mark my words people look at the look at a high end PC game of now, any game, any game, any P high end PC game, six years later on all three, across all three H generation consoles, they're gonna be looking better than that. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So, you know, I guess that's it for this podcast. You know, we should be doing another one later in the future when we have other stuff, when there's other stuff to talk about. I think we'll do, we'll do a uh, recap of what we did in this one as soon as we wait and see what these next gen consoles are going to actually be producing. So we'll get a better understanding, a better reading of what's going to happen. For you, the viewers, this has been Can't Tell Productions. This is Can't Tell You, 7694 signing off. I am Can't Tell Nothing 101. I'm out. Peace. All links and descriptions. Please answer comments, questions, or concerns in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and favorite the video. Until next time, peace.